Hey guys, Jimmo back in the booth and today we're going to be working with this 4600 Segola Scrambler base coat gun that I was just sent out. I've shown you some of the other Segola base guns and clear guns I've used before and they um, they work quite well. Actually, this is becoming one of my top choices for base coat gun. So uh, the other one, one of my other favorites, I'm going to be showing you in a little bit here near the end of the video on the next job working with translucent colors today and uh, this uh, Suzuki SX4 it requires uh, two steps to achieve the color that we want. So what we're going to do first is blend out our gray here. So we're going to call for a, a specific value of a, well, it's a shade of gray. So sometimes they're a little darker, sometimes they're lighter. In this case, it's sort of a medium. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover the entire area that we're painting. And then we're going to take it into the next panel. So we want to be careful on how you angle your gun here. You should sort of angle it back in towards the repair rather than towards your blend panel because you don't want that gray to fly all the way down the panel. And uh, otherwise you're going to have to bring more color and your blend's going to be way longer than you need it to or you want it to be. So we're going to try and work it out here and fade it out uh, as best we can. And what you often run into with those door jam areas, you see where the door and the corner lined up, was that you can you can put this color down and sometimes it'll travel further into the jams than you can cover in your next coat. So what we've done here is we've applied a second piece of foam tape in that edge and then we're, we're going to remove it after this dries and that's going to let us keep this color from traveling too far into that jam. So uh, most painters would be familiar with that problem. It's more common with sealers. Sealers seem to travel a lot further than base coat will. Um, there's actually a product, I've seen it at SEMA, I believe it was made by J-Tape. It's a two-piece foam tape that you can peel off uh, in the same way, but it's a little bit more practical here. So we ended up actually having to open up the door and take that piece of tape off there. I'm sure there's some other good tricks out there, so if you know of any, be sure to show them out in the comment section below. So my man Al here is going to uh, test out this gun and give me his take. And he's going to put on this first coat of base for us. So you can see now it covers pretty well over that ground. So if we had of skipped this ground coat, you know, it wouldn't cover quite as well. Probably say say we had a black on there, then this color would look really dark, and it would take a lot of coats to cover, maybe four, five, six, and it might not even look right. So a lot of the times, depending on the color, it can almost need to be treated like a tri-coat. So a color like B67, a BMW, like it's an orangey BM or yellow BMW color. Uh, I usually treat that like a tri-coat, do a letdown panel with it. And sometimes if you have too much base coat on there, it can get the color to go a little wonky. So a lot of the times they rely on this undercoat. So you're seeing a lot more of these colors, a lot of reds. And I'm going to show you a Bentley near the end. I'll talk about that color when it gets to that time, but it has a very specific requirement on coverage to get the color where you want it. So here I am putting on the second coat after letting everything flash off. So we're going to just keep blending it a little further and we want to be conscientious that we're not overextending our gun and getting paint all the way down that blend panel which could throw off the color to the door. So I must say these 4600 guns, this was my first time trying this one here. It was, uh, it's pretty well I think the same as the other 4600 I have but it has a, a slightly bigger tip. There's a 1.4 for Onyx which they recommend a little bit bigger tip. But I must say I've, uh, I like to take these guns to all kinds of different shops and the two that have really sort of blown me away and uh, as far as the feedback I've got and the experience I've had with them is the 4600 base coat gun and the Walcom HTE base coat gun. So I've had a lot of diehard SATA guys or uh, Develbus. I don't run into a lot of people that swear by the Iwata base coat gun but um, when I've put this gun in their hands they've been extremely impressed at uh, how well it works. So. Uh, it just lays down metallics pretty effortlessly and has a nice look to it and uh, it works pretty well. So we've got the base coat gu or base coat on now. Um, I th think we just missed the effect coat. So after the two coats uh, of coverage, we'll usually check our coverage there, make sure we don't see any primer. And then we'll put on a lighter, well, we'll increase our distance a bit and even out the metallics with a drop coat. So we've got Al is laying on the clear 
using the 4600 Segola clear gun, and he was a little indifferent to this. Again, it's his first time spraying with the gun, so usually, you know, it usually takes you a few cracks at it to really get dialed in and get a good feel for the gun and your, you know, your spraying style. This gun, it uh, it kind of reminds me of the new Techna clear coat gun, just the way it hammers on the clear, it puts it on pretty wet. So I would say it, it doesn't seem to atomize it as fine as something like the Iwata WS400 would. But uh, if you, you know, depending on how you like to spray, it's, uh, it puts it puts the clear on quick. So you're in and out in a hurry. So we've got uh, this job almost cleared here. We're going to move on and talk about this next color on the Bentley. So what we've got on this one here is a very light blue with a very fine metallic in it. And it's a, it's a pretty cool color, but again, it's going to require a white ground coat first. And then I'm going to treat it like a tri-coat and do, well, do a letdown panel as I go with it to get the color where I want it. So it's it was actually matched in the lab, this color for us. And uh, the recommendations were three to four coats of blue over top of the white to get the color where you want it. So if you go too heavy, you can actually change it and you know get it a little bit further from what you wanted. But we're going to do the same thing. We've already blended out. So actually this is the yeah, this is the blue going on now. Uh, sorry I didn't get a ton of video on this one, but it was a cool job and I want to show you some of it. We've um, we've put the white down, blended it out in a few spots. We're going to try and keep the color away from anywhere on those edges uh, where it's going to line up to the bumper so we don't throw off any color match there. But uh, here is what it kind of looks like after a few coats of blue over our white. So it's a pretty cool looking color, I must say. And we, what we did was, since there was no brakes on the sail panel, we had to go up and over with the clear and clear both sides so we didn't blend out the clear on a nice car like this. And what we've also done is put on an extra coat of clear. So there's three coats of clear on this one. And that's going to let us sand it down and match the factory look, which is what they do from the factory is they sand, sand it right down and they, they polish it up. So you've got pretty well no texture at all, which is pretty difficult to spray. I'm sure there's probably some paint superstars out there that uh, might be able to tell me wrong. But, uh, you know, I've never seen anybody lay down product without a bit of texture. And especially when we get into these low VOC products, which tend to have a little bit more body to them and it's... It's tougher to lay them smooth, but this is what we got here. Uh, we've got the HTE clear gun from Walcom there. That's actually a pretty nice clear gun as well. So these are, I'm uh, just showing you a couple of different gun options that maybe, I guess, in North America you don't see a lot of. The uh, the base coat gun, actually, it's a funny story to, to go borrow that base gun off of Gabe from Motivated Painters. So he was kind enough to help me out because I sort of ended up painting this thing in a pinch out of town and I didn't have a base coat gun with me so he helped me out and uh, I do have one of those coming that uh, I want to break in a little bit more but I've had a lot of good feedback on that gun from the people that uh, I know of, that have used it and that I trust and uh, the spraying experience I've had with it and on this job it seemed to work quite well so that's uh, that's it uh, hopefully you guys liked this video let me know what you think and if you have any secrets on translucent colors be sure to share them below thanks for watching and we will see you next time